Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max Experiments at Large. Science Max! It's time to get stuck on magnets. What's our attraction to magnets? What's their attraction to each other? And can I use magnets to levitate and float in the air? All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil, and today we're going to be looking at the power of mag magnets. You see, magnets are fun things to experiment with because they are really, OK, they're really interesting. Um, this magnet that I've got here is a neodymium magnet or a rare earth magnet. It's one of the oh, one of the one of the strongest magnets you can get. Um, a magnet is an object that is attracted to uh, anything that is ferromagnetic, which is iron, nickel, or cobalt. And mag magnets are interesting because they have two sides. There are two. Uh, oh, there are two poles. I'd show you, but I can't get the chain off. Hold on one second. Ha ha! Mm. There are two. Oh no. There are two poles to every magnet, uh, just like the Earth. There is a North Pole and a South Pole. That's right, the Earth is a giant magnet. So if you take kitchen magnets, you'll find that there's two different poles. I've written north and south on these ones. They don't normally come like that. If you put the north and the south together, they stick. But if you put the north and north or south and south together, they repel. They repel, see? They don't want to go together at all. And you can force them together if you want. But if you do, they will spring away the second you let them go. Woo! <laughs> But when magnets repel each other, I find that some of the most interesting stuff. Check this out. This is just a small container, and I've got a magnet in here, and I have a loony attached to it so that it fits nicely in the container like that. For the top, I've attached two magnets together, and I have another coin on it. And if you put them in there, I've made sure that the two poles repel each other, which means this magnet will just sit there and float. Magnetic levitation. Very interesting. And you can pop the top on that if you want and just carry around a levitating magnet. Now, there's a couple fancier ways you can levitate stuff with magnets. This is just a wooden frame I've made. Uh, this is completely not necessary. You can use just about anything in your house. A desk lamp works really well. The important part is I've tied a magnet to the end of this arm here. And this is a bolt, which is attracted to the magnet but it's got a thread tied to it, so it can't get there. Just far enough that it will actually hang in mid-air. Look at that, it's not attached to anything, it's just being pulled up by the attraction from the magnet. The thing is, as soon as you pull the bolt away far enough, it will lose the attraction and it'll just fall. Very cool. Here's one that's a little bit more complicated but it's also really neat. This one uses disc magnets, which have a circle or a hole in the middle of them here. And you put two around a pencil and then four more in such a position that you can put the pencil against this wood on the side and it will just levitate on its own. You can even give it a spin. Look at that. And if you want to make a levitating pencil yourself, there's step-by-step -step instructions on how to build an easy-peasy version on our website. Meantime, we are going to max this out. Magnetic levitation on Science Max experiments at large. But you're probably thinking, what are we going to levitate? Well, we're going to levitate me. At least, that's the plan. 
That's why I'm going to the center for skills development and training. Come on. Hi, Phil. This is Matt. He's from Jobmaster Magnets. Now, you guys use lots of big magnets, right? That's right, we do. Awesome. So maybe you could help me max out this. Wow. You did a great job of building the levitating pencil experiment. Yeah. So what's going on here, exactly? Well, all magnets have at least a north and a south pole. Right. And when you put like poles together, they want to repel. Oh, OK. So have you ever levitated a person? Not yet. Well, let's do it. All right. Do you think we can use these? We can try. OK, well, uh, put that one on the ground. And okay, so north, and I'll put the north one on my foot here. And then if I just step, oh, wait a minute. If I step, stop moving. If I step on the, step on the, okay. Well, first of all, the, this magnet keeps sort of moving right. away from me when I try to push down on it. Uh, what do we do? How do we fix this? Well, we need to keep the magnets in position so that they don't move around when you try to bring them together. Yeah, because I have to come straight down on it, don't That's I? That's right. So why don't we attach this one to the floor? Good idea. And then we'll put a board on this one, and we'll see how it goes. Perfect. OK, let's do it. All right. This is a magnet. This is a magnet. This is a magnet. This is a shoe. What's the difference? To know that, you have to know your magnets. This is a donut. It does not stick to this magnet. This is a spoon. It sticks to this magnet. These paper clips stick to this magnet. This shoe does not. So what has attracted the magnets? Only things that are ferromagnetic. Here's the difference. Horseshoe, horseshoe magnet. This one is a magnet. This one. It's not. But the horseshoe sticks to the horseshoe magnet because this one's a magnet and this one is ferromagnetic. Only things that are ferromagnetic are attracted to magnets. Things that are not attracted to magnets, they're not ferromagnetic. Plastic, banana, mitten, sandwich, magazine. No. But how do you know? Do you go around the world sticking a magnet to every single thing one at a time? Hey, Ma, I need you to come over. I need to see if you're ferromagnetic. No, ferromagnetic. No, you don't need to do that. First of all, only metals are ferromagnetic. So that eliminates all your clothing, your luncheon meats, your magazines, what have you. Everything that's non-metal, you don't need to worry about. You, you, never mind, Ma, it doesn't matter. But. This clock is metal. It doesn't stick. Well, not all metals are ferromagnetic. Mainly just the ones with iron, nickel, or cobalt. And there you have it. Now you know your magnets. I hit the phone on the magnet there. Okay, uh, can you hear me, Ma? Hang up the phone. Hang up. Hang up the phone, Ma. My first attempt at levitating had the magnet sliding all over. So the plan is to take the bottom magnet and attach it to a big wooden board so it won't go anywhere. Then attach another plank to the top magnet to make it a little easier to stand on. OK, that uh, is definitely attached to the floor. Thank you. All right, now, if I just get this lined up. Whoa, look at that. It could totally, oh, wait a minute, totally it doesn't want to stay put. Oh, wait a minute. They levitate. Come on. Levitate. Why doesn't it want to stay? And it just doesn't. Hmm. Should I stand on it? OK, I'll stand on it. Here we go. And ah. Ha. Ah. Am I levitating? No. No. Hmm. So why isn't this working? Well, just like your pencil experiment, 
We need a shaft through the center to hold the magnets in position. Oh yeah, maybe we could use like a ring magnet. Yes. That, like we use with the pencil. Right. And? And we're gonna need stronger magnets. We're gonna need stronger magnets. Are the ring magnets strong? Yes, they can be. Awesome. All right, let's do it. All right. <laughs> 